Help support the companies that support our community. So this is the first piece of the goblet I'm gonna make. So it's a piece about four by four and about two inches thick. So this is just gonna be the base. Each piece on this goblet is gonna be separate. So I'm just using a spindle gouge to true it up and I'm gonna put a tenon on it so I can grab it in the chuck. So this is the bottom of the base, so I'm going to cup it out so it sits nice and flat. And I'm using the number one hollower here. Then I'm going to make a little recess in the bottom of it, bottom of it so I can grab it with the chuck and expand the jaws to hold on to it. So I'm just making that little recess. Then once I get that done, I'll run through all the grits and sand it. So I always, somebody asked on the last video why I sand dry for the first couple of grits. And it's just to make sure that there's no little imperfection, this torn grain or anything like that. It's a little, little harder once you start putting the oil on to go back and clean that up. So I always run through with a couple of grits dry and then start sanding with the oil once I know it's all clean. And this is just the doctor's walnut oil. I'll have a link down below in the description to it. Once I got that all done, I ran all the way up to 600 with that. I'll come around the top here and part this off and then we can grab it in the chuck and make a nice dome on the top of it. And I'm just going to clean this up again with the number one hollower, just round it over, and then I'll do the same process here, run through a couple of grits dry, and then switch over to the oil. Now that we have that done, I'm gonna switch and make the bottom part of the stem. So this piece actually has, or the goblet actually has six separate pieces in it. And this is, it's all out of koa. It's just beautiful wood. So the bottom part of the stem is gonna be mounted on there. I'm using a spindle gouge to true it up. So when I get all these pieces done, I'm gonna hook them together. They're all gonna be drilled out and I'm going to use wire to hold hold them all together. So here in a sec, after I get this shaped, I'm going to drill a hole all the way through this piece so that we can get it mounted to the base and then the first bead on the stem. So if get, everything is a little bit round, I'm cupping out the bottom of this. This is what's going to sit on the base and you want it to sit nice and flat. So just cupped it out a little bit. That way when I hook it all together, you don't don't see any gaps in it.
Once I got it drilled out, same process here, a couple of grits dry, and then went in and put the oil on it. The wire is going to be glued on the inside, so not really worried about getting oil down in there. After I got it all sanded, went ahead and parted it off and it flew across the shop. And luckily I found it pretty quick. So next piece we're going to work on is the main cup at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and shape the outside of this, hollow it out, and then bring a little part of the stem down on this. Same process here, I went ahead and made a tenon on this one and two, so I can grab it in the chuck so I can hollow it out. And again, to shape it, I'm using a spindle gouge and the lathe speed on almost all these pieces were, was right at 2,500 RPMs. Before I bring the stem down too small, I'm going to go ahead and sand up the majority of it, the inside of the cup and the majority of the outside, and then I'll bring the stem down here in a second. After I got it brought down, went ahead and parted it off. And then I'm going to remount it in the chuck with the jaws. And I put a little, one of those non skid pads over it so it didn't damage it. And then went ahead and sanded up the stem.
Once I got that done, switched over, and I'm gonna make the beads. So I'm gonna do three beads, and these are gonna go in between the two little stem pieces. So I just brought down another piece, and then made the three beads. I just, in the video, I just show making the, making the first one, but I actually made three of them, and I gradually got a little bit smaller on, on each one. And on the beads, I didn't oil them. I just wanted to wait till I was done because after I parted them off, I had to sand the little spot right here. This one pops out, pops out of my hand too. So I have to sand that little part right there at the end. So I didn't put oil on them. I did that afterwards. So as far as drilling them out for the wires, I drilled a hole and then I used a countersink bit to cup them out a little bit and so that way when they all go together on these little round or curved pieces, you won't see the wire. So that's the first one I did and that was the hole I drilled all the way through. So I just wanted to mark it on the base and then I used five minute epoxy. So I put these all together with little bits of wire, but because the beads aren't like lined up and I even if they were lined up, you might be able to see a little bit of that wire. On each one of the beads, I took that countersink bit and just cupped it out just a teeny little bit so it would kind of go down around the bead before it. So with this, this was kind of a long little process here. We, we would uh, epoxy it in, wait 15, 20 minutes, come back out after it was dry and, and, uh, and then do the next one. And then I went and drilled a hole in, in the bead, got it all put together, and then came out and drilled a hole in the bead after it was on there. Cause I was kind of holding them up there, looking at them, for trying to figure out exactly, you know, what, what looked good. I knew I didn't want them lined up. I kind of wanted them to look like it was bending around. And if you just draw a straight hole through it, it wouldn't look like that. It would just look like there was a stack of beads. After that first one dried, came back, and I'm drilling the hole, countersinking the bead that's going to go on, on the top of it so that it goes together nice and tight. And just little bits of epoxy. And put it together and then wait. <laughs> And same thing, I came back out and did the did the final the little one on top. So I think this gives it a better look than if they were just stacked there. It kind of gives it, you know, look where it's, it's kind of wrapping around. So, and if you're going to do that, definitely drill them like this, just separately and countersink the the next bead so that it hides it. So I did on the, the base and the two first beads, I used a little bit thicker wire and then when I got up to this top one, it's pretty small bead, so I switched and I just grabbed a piece of copper wire and used it. And then for the cup, I went ahead and held it up there at an angle I liked and went ahead and drilled down into that bead. So the cup, I countersink the, that on there. I'm just trying to get the hole started with a little bit here, but the, the actual stem on the cup is cupped out too, so it'll wrap around that bead.
After the epoxy set up, I put a little bit of walnut oil on the beams. There it is. This was a fun one. I really enjoyed doing this. So Robin found a picture of something similar to this, but it was a lidded box and they had done beads like this too. And it was super cool. So I was kind of studying the picture to figure out how they had got the beads on there. And I'm not sure, don't know who did it, but this is what I came up with. And I just made a wine glass out of it. So I'm calling this one last call. But it was a it was a fun one. If you are gonna do, you know, connect beads like this or really anything, um, make sure you countersink it and then drill them separately. That way it will all line up and you when you look at it you won't see the the wire or whatever you use to, to put it together. But it was a really fun project and it's just a beautiful piece of koa. Very nice. And I did the did the whole thing out of the koa. It's seven inches tall and the cup is three inches. Uh, it was a fun one. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Everybody take care. Have a good weekend and we will see you next week.